so who who here has attended college? I oh attended college? Yeah, I, I've been to college. Yes, Sam. Well, I mean, all three right? of us have have attended. <laughs> oh, apparently. <well. laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but yeah. So for me, uh, when it comes to college, it's it's weird because I grew up in a family where they saw I had talent for art, and they were like, "You're gonna be an artist when you grow up," and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be a famous artist," and Grandma, I'll buy you a house. And, you know, <laughs> I'm 30 years old and I'm back in Grandma's house. But anyway. Um... Hey, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, I mean, <laughs> this is the... Sp Look, this is the place to get things out, all right? Look. It, yeah, I If know. you didn't get it out... The depression's I real. Know. I had a conversation <laughs> with Heather where we were like, Look. She said something joking about like wanting to be here. And I was like, you don't want to make this joke, Heather, because it's not going to sound pretty if I say what's on my mind right now. <laughs> so, so it's like, you know, I grew up just having, you know, expecting uh, to uh, having my family expect a lot from me. So through the years, um, I was pretty good in school. I never liked school, but, you know, I do what I had to do. But. It's like my when my grandfather died when I was like 11 or 12, I spiraled into depression because he was like my father figure because my, my dad actually left. So, you know, that's not surprising, is it? But um, so, yeah, my father figure died. I spiraled into, into some wild depression and I was just going to junior high school. And the change in the change in an environment in junior high school just it didn't help with my depression so i got to the point where i didn't already like school you know i was getting bullied the teacher like our teacher got bullied so we barely learned anything so it was like <laughs> i don't want to go to school i don't want to go and then it's like but if i don't go i'm getting in trouble so it got to the point where my family thought i was being lazy I didn't know what was wrong with me. I just felt depressed all the time. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't draw anymore. And then it's like, I got therapy a couple of years later. And what's funny is my mom, no one liked this woman because she was a younger therapist. And apparently because younger therapists don't just look at you and give you medicine, they don't like that. So she actually listened to what I had to say. And I told her that, you know, I wanted to dress the way I wanted to dress, even though I lived, you know, in the hood in New York. Black man, I, I what if I want to play, paint my nails black? What if I want to look goth? She said, "Do it." Oh, uh, you know all right. what the fuck happened? No, oh, was, hell, you were yeah. like, you kept I got, like I said I got disconnected for a second. We're good. We're good. <laughs> no, you kept, you kept, good? you kept freezing over and over. But I think that's because oh. we had a different server, so I just changed. Okay, it. so all we're right. good. So. All right. So she encouraged me to be myself. And the thing about the thing I learned recently about psychology is that learning yourself is the best weapon you have against yourself. Y your life will be so much better once you know yourself and what you want out of life. So like that, those therapy sessions, even though she got fired, which is fucked up, like she helped me. And then um, it got to the point where over the years, I got held back. Well, I got held back in school like two times. So, you know when you're depressed, there's self-pity and all that shit? So, mm -hmm. the more I was depressed, the more I fucked up, and the more I fucked up, the more I got self-pity. Depressed. Yeah, yeah. it's just like... <laughs> it's a, it's a cycle. Years. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's like, when I got to high school, my first year of high school, I said, you know what? I'm getting kind of old for this shit. Like... Why don't I just leave high school and get my GED or something, right? And then I can go to college and do whatever fuck I want. So I went to an alternative school. I was there for a year, took the GED test, passed everything except math by one point. That one point was stopping me, right, from going to fucking college. 
So I said, okay, let me get my head in the game. Let me go back to school and study and I'll do it again. I took the test three more times. And every time I took the math test, I scored lower and lower, <laughs> lower and lower. Yikes. So I was like, dude, am I not meant to just do this? Like, what is going on? Like, eventually I got it. Eventually I got it. But it's like, after I got it, I was like, fuck college, whatever. I, I don't care anymore because I dated a girl who went to college. She went to Kingsborough. I was on campus to see her. And that's how I met a lot of my friends. People think I went to college. I didn't tell them anything. They're like, you got class? I was like, yeah, whatever. I got class. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just I'm just on yeah. campus to see her and hang out. So it's like. Honestly, that's, that's in my opinion, the best way to do college. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't have to go to class or nothing. I was there. It was fun. I got lunch. I went to, I went to the cafeteria and got some lunch. And yeah. I was like, yeah. But I ain't got to go no goddamn class. <laughs> it was great. It was yeah. Great. And so what, and you went to college, Kirby, what was your experience? Like I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try to anchor it. Cause I, maybe I don't think my opinion's so radical anymore at this current age, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how was, how was your college experience? Mine was good. Like I didn't have that much of an issue. Um, my childhood has been, a little bit more uh structured let's just say my parents kind of were like yeah you're gonna do this you're gonna do this you're gonna do this i'm gonna like okay sure so um i went into hospitality like uh, hotel management was what i studied for in um for college and i went to switzerland went to a really really nice school very expensive though but um it's fine and then um you know i fit in pretty well because I'm really good at socializing with other people, right? And um, what I just kind of made myself was I was the organizer, the organizer for any party. I, I would be the person people would look out for and be like, yo, I've got this party that I want to do. You know, could you set it up? I'll be like, sure, what's your budget? And I'll, I'll make it happen, right? And so I was popular because of that. But um, like school wise, it wasn't that bad, you know? I just kind of messed around, didn't really try. I just did the bare minimum to get, you know, make my parents happy, make everyone that's, else happy. And that's <laughs> all that's that, it. that's the yeah. thing, right? Like, it's, it's, that's it. Like, I, it's like, I, why, so, why, why try so hard in, in fucking public school? Like, just give me my grades. Get the, I want to get I out. I have this, I have this conversation. So again, I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it here before. I went to college. I went to. I don't know if I went that far into it, but I went to Rutgers for five years um, for computer science, and I graduated and got a bachelor of science in computer science and all that shit that sounds sounds cool on paper. Um, and I, I'll I say it all the time: the best part of college wasn't school at all, ever. It was meeting my lifelong friends who I'm still friends with. Like I said, tomorrow a bunch of my friends are coming over. That's them who I've known since college. Without college, I would not know Monster Hunter, right? They're the my college friends who I talk to now are the people who introduced me to Monster Hunter. So, like, who knows? This whole path right here, th all of this might not even be a thing. They're the first people who taught when I got into building computers, I got into phone technology, like, and again, all that stuff was just meeting my friends and being into what we do. I mean, I was into always into video games and nerdy shit and whatever, but like we all kind of were into it together and would like kind of push ourselves to learn more about it and get more into it and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, like PC gaming, fucking Monster Hunter, streaming, like all that shit. I probably wouldn't I wouldn't be doing any of this if I didn't meet them. So it's like was college important for me? Sure, because it, you know, helped me get more into the things I like doing. Uh leading down to the path that I'm here now uh was the education that important to me fuck no dude no i didn't one one maybe two classes of my college education meant anything to me the first class i took of python programming and my system administration class that is it and the system administration is a light pass because i worked on campus 
in the IT. Uh, so I basically relearned all that shit working in IT anyway. So that class, eh, sure, I'll give it on a light day. So really like one and a half classes is like all that fucking mattered in the five years that I was there that I use like today. I still use Python. I still code in Python today. Right. I still do system admin shit. All that. That's what I'm always doing. That's basically what I do. When I'm not playing video games because I'm messing around with computers and servers and installing shit like that's fortunately I have that when I have no fucking video games to play. I can mess around with computers and have fun with that. So like that's where I get that part from. So like college is cool for all the shit I did outside of it. Um relationships i learned a lot through that like i was in a relationship for four years and then it just fucking ended that was like growth as just a human being uh a relationship after being in one for four years and seeing what that's like again growth as a human being like that kind of stuff is important if you don't have a very clear cut need and what you want to do in college it uh it ain't it to me in this current day. And I think a lot of kids now know that and thank goodness. And that's the thing I think our, uh, cause we're all around the same age. Our parents' generation was like, college is it. You like, boom, that's it. That's how you do it. That's how you, that's how it works. And like times have obviously changed. And my mom is in, uh, college now she's getting, well, she already had her bachelor's of, I don't remember. She's got like two degrees already in something. She's like getting a um another degree in like childcare stuff now. Uh so she's taking college in the current year and she's seeing a lot of the bullshit that I had to deal with and she's like, This is insane. Cause it was the college we went to was much different than the college my mom went to. So she's thinking I'm going to college like that, and it's like there's a lot of bullshit going on. A whole lot of buy a book, teach yourself, and come to class and take a fucking test, and there's your grade. It's like, why am I paying for this? Why am I putting myself in debt for the rest of my life to teach myself a class that I'm not going to need to get a piece of paper that just says I went here? Um, mm-hmm. But it is what it is, and uh, I again, I think the kids these days are like, yo, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go to college and I Which don't see the good point too. Because yeah. you know for me like my I don't my family put a lot of stress on me and I don't think they realize that. And Yeah, a lot of a lot of where, uh, for our parents generations a lot of them did cuz a lot of yes. a lot of our generation was first time going to college. Yeah. Uh, so so it was like you got to go to college cuz that's what it you know you're the first one to graduate and all that and it's like yeah yeah, sure awesome milestones but like do you realize the mental pressure you're putting under me to be putting a hundred plus thousand dollars of debt and i don't know what i want to do at the age of fucking 18 yeah nobody knows what they want to do at 18 that's what i'm saying that's that's what i'm saying because because at some point in my life even when i was young you know yes i was good at traditional art and i wanted to be an artist but i didn't really know what i wanted to do i just knew that when i was a kid i liked to draw so in my mind that's like oh that's what i'm gonna do but it's like the older i got i started to feel lost but my family just kept kept suggesting a really safe route and i rejected that every time without even realizing i didn't want to go to safe route. i didn't want to go to college or just finish high school and get like work for the MTA or some shit. Like I didn't want to do that. Like I knew there was stuff to do, but I didn't know how to find it. You know, I I knew there were different odd jobs and ways to get your yourself in a door, but my family doesn't know that. All they know is that go to school, get a good job that pays, and you're set. And for me it's yeah. like it's not that simple. It really isn't. And I feel like if I would have went that route, I would not be happy because I'm doing something I don't like doing every day. It's like, yeah, sure, I can work for the MTA and fucking make mad money, but I don't care about trains. And I fucking hate riding the MTA. Why would I want to fucking work for the MTA? Like, why? You know, that's crazy. You see what I'm saying? That's crazy. You know what's crazy? 
oh man, what what if you go to college and then you get a job and then you like don't want to do it every day? That's that's crazy. You know, I wouldn't know firsthand or anything, but you know, that's that's crazy. You know, and I, I'm not I hate to ever I'm, hate to ever be okay. in a situation like think that. About, that would, think about game that journalists, you know, for example, right? That wouldn't a, send you a through a them, mental depression and want to, you know, uh, you know, put your relationship, you know, on the line and, you know, want to end everything and you just don't know what the hell you're supposed to do in life. And then now you still got to pay back loans for this degree that, you know, wh yes. who cares? Yes. I would know nothing about that, though. But that's crazy. No. See, that's no. what I'm saying. No way. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, um, uh, what the hell was I going to say? Um, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Wait. What the fuck was I gonna say? We're all uh, getting fucking old. Buddy. The Plus Thirty Podcast. I'm changing the name yeah, of the, the pod. <laughs> um, it's it's yeah. like um, there. It's like you feel like you're not going the route your 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 parents or your family suggest, so they make you feel like there's no way out. Like, my grandmother made me feel like if I don't do what she's telling me to do or suggests me to do, that my only option is being a bum on the street. And <laughs> they don't understand how much mental pressure that puts on you. Because when you're yeah. not making it, you feel like your life is over and you don't find a way to to change that. You, you're you just like, I need to go down this path. This is, this is what I've been told my whole life. And... Because it's not working out, then I guess it's over for me. And it's like then you waste a lot of time doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? And that's and that's what's crazy because the inverse uh is not always better, right? I mean I'm a I'm I'm always I'm basically a poster child for failing at everything that works. Uh that's what I look at myself for a lot of things. Um yeah, I went to college, yeah, I graduated, yeah, I got a job in computer science shit's fucked up right yeah i stream forever yeah a lot of people came by my stream yeah i got partnered yeah people think my stream is cool shit's fucked up right like going by the book by the book being doing the shit that people say you're supposed to do and it's like oh yeah that's he did the thing like um my brother and i uh my brother's like 10 years older and we're not like antithesis, like we hate each other. But as far as, again, looking from the outside, it's like my brother was a rebel. He was the artist. He would like leave school. He did all that kind of shit, uh, trouble, all that. And I was like, oh, there's Sam. He just goes to school. He plays video games and, you know, all that. And it's like, um, cool. Yeah, I did all that. But like, what's up here? Like, it, uh, how about those thoughts like that? Nobody cares about that. It's just like, oh, you 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 did the thing. You did the thing that you, American that, Dream tells you to do. But I don't want to fucking from, be here. <laughs> so part, how yeah, about that? Part, part of that comes from the last generation behind us, where yeah. they sucked up everything, and they just did what they had to do to make a buck and live comfortably. But like, if you're still alive. You're not living comfortably. Like, you're not. Things are more expensive. Like, so what you did 20, 30 years ago is not helping you now. So it's like, you know, like, uh, like, fifth, no, not 50, but like 30 years ago, I could work part time, make $10 an hour, and still get an apartment. Can't do that shit now. No in New York. fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> do no that way. Shit now. No. No way. No. Yeah, no way. No. So, no you know, way. You know, like my my grandmother it took her a while to understand what my generation was going through because at first it it was she was always hammering in. You, you, you find somewhere to work, find something and just stay there or whatever. But now, like, yeah, that's the she's thing. the most Play understanding person that I can talk and to. And that's what's crazy, right, is that was, again, that was a thing. You get yeah. a job, you're there for 50 years, you retire, your pension's in, you're good, you're chilling. Yo, if you have a resume and you have one job on it and you go to a different job, they're like, why did you only work at one other place? Yeah. And that's like a knock. That right? is. It's, 
it's crazy. It's crazy. Most Those places are just have a higher now. retention rate. Even the place I'm going to now, it is the epitome of dead end. Like, sure, if you're like a weeb like I was, or I, I still am kind of a weeb, but if you're like a weeb, <laughs> and you're like, whoa, I get to work at a Japanese place. Wow, Japanese people and people are from Japan, and we get to talk about it. And it's like, yeah. And then you work there for like five years and you're still in the same place. Like, making the same money. He's just there. Like, and yep. then you see people that's been there for like fucking almost 50 years in the same position. Like, how does that make you feel? Like, it's like, why the fuck? Why the fuck yeah. am I here then? Right? Yeah. Like, so, and I'm, I'm interested for you, Carol, cause you're, you, you had a whole a different culture. You're not from America. So like, how was that? whole thing for you as in how you feel about well just those kind of pressures in general i'm just curious um mine's a responsibility so mm. it doesn't matter what i feel of like the pressures because it's a family responsibility i'm the eldest in my family so i have a younger brother and we are basically polar opposites. We get along fine. Like we we love to we both love to play video games. But that is pretty much the only common ground we have with each other because I have to uphold all of the family's responsibilities as being the eldest. And so that doesn't leave me with a lot of free time to do what I actually want to do or what I enjoy doing. But I overcame this because you just get better at time management. So um, yeah, I mean, to me, I don't have any of the problems that, uh, Mike said, you know, about feeling the external, um, uh, well, family pressures and all that stuff, because I just accepted it. And to me, since day one, it was kind of expected, you know, it was a responsibility. It was expected of me to carry out all, all of these responsibilities. Right. And instead of being, um, you know, worrying about how I'm going to do it and all of that stuff. I was just like, you know what? We'll take it one step at a time. And if I need help, I'll ask, you know, I'll ask my parents, yo, I don't know how to do this. How do I do it? And they'll explain it to me, you know, but I do understand where that pressure comes from. Like what Mike is, went through, you know, about, um, you know, people not fully understanding what you're going through and just being like, just deal with it, get a job, forehead, make some money, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, you know, I, the, to some extent, I had to deal with that, but it wasn't that big of a deal because I've always been more of a problem solver. So my dad always told me this one story before. He was like, I think he was like, don't be a pigeon or something and be an eagle. And like the eagle is like the predator, the problem solver. Everyone looks up to the eagle because they can solve your issues, right? And he was like, my dad was always like, you need to be a person that can solve your own issues by yourself and solve other people's issues. That way you have value and people will flock to you. And, you know, that way you get support. Um, and so I always grew up with that mentality of I need to be better than everyone in one field at the very least one field and that way when people need help i can i can assist them and provide value so that um i become irreplaceable basically and so for me that was socializing organizing and um you know just hospitality stuff right i was really good at um uh, being courteous being a butler waiter whatever you need service stuff right and I know to some people, like, you know, they, their dignity or their pride won't let them, won't allow them to do certain jobs, like, you know, be a waiter or be a butler, so forth and so on. But for me, I don't have that much issue. I have a lot of pride, but the pride is in what I do. If I do something, I want to do it right, or I want to do it well, right? And so the pride that I have motivates me to try harder, to do better instead of um, being afraid or gatekeeping me from doing anything that I, I would, you know, not try otherwise, because I'm like, oh, what if I mess up? What if I, you know, make a fool of myself, stuff like that. I kind of threw that out the window. And so 
it's been more of a I don't, I don't know more of a motivator that i'm willing to try new things i'm more than happy to make myself look like a fool as long as i learn something from it and i benefit in the long run <laughs> so you know a, a great example is um youtube right in youtube in um for new genesis or just pso2 most people like my content because i admit when i'm wrong when i'm wrong i'll be like yo i fucked up i'm sorry guys you know I i'll i'll just own up to it and then i'll try my best to make it up to people to provide better information i'll try harder i'll spend more time fact checking so forth and so on and most people don't see me at least i don't think most people see me as like the super tryhard, the only source of content uh, or you know news and stuff like that i'm more like hey i'm just your buddy i play video games i play this game a lot and i just share what i think about the game it's not like i'm enforcing this is what the game should be played like or you know you should play ngs like this you should grind using this method blah 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 i'm just like hey guys this is what i do but if you have a better idea or a better solution let me know because i'm more than happy to try your solution right so it's more like a we're equals you know i'm not superior to you you're not superior to me we're just equals we're just friends we're just having a good time right and that's kind of the approach that i've always taken so whenever i meet challenges or like issues um like let's say that you know a friend is looking for a job right instead of being like hey i got a job for you i got everything sorted out hop on it i go hey let's look for a job together you know what do you, what can you do and i help them out like okay let's do a swot analysis of your personality what what are you good at what are you bad at what don't you like what do you like and then i it takes a lot more time but i feel like it's a lot more effective in helping other people like this and when that way when i have problems i can reach out to them because they're like oh caro helped me out a lot so i'm more than happy to help him out and this is kind of how I've built 